My name is Vincent Young. I'm an infectious disease physician at the University of Michigan Medical School. Well, the NIH, the NIH Human Microbiome Project is something that extends past the gastrointestinal tract. It has several goals, one of which is to characterize the normal microbiota that are present on the human body, not just in the GI tract, but also the mouth, the urogenital tract, the upper respiratory tract, and as far as the gastrointestinal tract, that includes the upper GI tract and the lower GI tract. The skin is another area. What a number of the investigators are trying to find out is, first of all, what defines the normal human microbiome? And for this, they have an, several hundred volunteers who are being sampled at multiple sites over time, and basically a catalog of all the bacteria that are present on the patients is being generated. There's another series of investigators who are conducting what are called demonstration projects. And in these demonstration projects, the investigators are trying to come up with a link between the indigenous microbiota and either health states or disease states. And the diseases are quite wide-ranging. This ranges from things such as inflammatory bowel disease in the gut, Barrett's esophagus and esophageal cancer, psoriasis, acne. There's even studies that are trying to look if the microbiota can influence obesity. For example, there, there's one investigator who's looking at Amish people and seeing if they have a similarly frugal microbiota that allows them to gain appropriate weight on somewhat reduced calorie intake foods. I think most physicians are aware that indiscriminate use of antibiotics can lead to unintended consequences. In most cases, though, we're mostly concerned about antibiotic resistance, and the, that is the rise of an individual organism that is resistant to the antibiotic and may cause disease at a later time. I think that most physicians actually haven't heard much about the Human Microbiome Project, and when they prescribe antibiotics, for example, for pneumonia, they're probably not thinking about what possible effects it has on the GI microbiota. They may think about Clostridium difficile because most physicians at one time have taken care of a patient who got Clostridium difficile due to antibiotics, but they're probably not thinking about long-term changes in this complex community of organisms and how it could lead to other conditions such as recurrent Clostridium difficile, inflammatory bowel disease, and asthma and allergy.